How you doing guys, welcome to another video. This is volume six, option B, biochemistry. And for some of you, this might be your last video. So well done, let's get into it, let's finish it off, capiche. Okay, so volume six, biochemistry in, in, and the environment. We look at some environmental problems and then some solutions to those environmental problems. The IB understandings and applications and skills are long for this video, um, and I'm not really sure how much the IB will assess on it. I would say there will be a question, but I don't think it will be as in-depth as what we expect. So let's have a look at xenobiotics. Xenobiotics refer to a chemical that are found in organisms that would not normally be present there. So for example, DDT, dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane, was introduced into the 50s to increase the yield of crops um, in the environment worldwide. Now, DDT is a very stable compound and would accumulate in animals. And when they were passed along to the, of the food chain, they could reach very high levels, especially in the top order predators. That was known as biomagnification. And DDT had a bad impact on a lot of animals, including things like birds, where their eggshells ended up being really, really thin. Now, the body removes xenobiotics, such as antibiotics, through metabolism. But xenobiotics are a problem for wastewater treatment plants because all of the antibodies, antibiotics are going to that location. So they have their own problems with trying to remove them. So it's believed that microorganisms with enough time can break down these xenobiotics, but it does take time. This is why they say not to tip your useless medicine down the sink or down the toilet because it increases the amount of xenobiotics in the treatment system and takes them longer to remove. Plastics and polymers. Well, many traditional plastics are biologically inert and they remain intact for hundreds of thousands of years. Biodegradable polymers can be digested by microorganisms within a relatively short time frame. So starch-based polymers can, are made up of about 50% of the biodegradable plastics and basically it's a mixture of starch and glycerol. And by changing the amounts, we can vary the type of material we have. Starch is easily broken down by microorganisms and it's being renewable, so it's a good alternative to fossil fuel plastics. On the right hand side I've got an image of the Cadbury box, the little plastic that holds the delicious chocolates, that's actually biodegradable. So if you put that out in the backyard, leave it for a few weeks, you'll find that it breaks down very, very quickly. A, a good way of reducing our carbon footprint. Host guess chemistry. Well that involves the creation of a synthetic host that mimics some of the actions performed by enzymes in the cell. The host has a structure that allows the guest, the substrate, to selectively bind to its specific shape. It works kind of like a cage. Okay, our cage is our host and the guest gets trapped inside the cage, kind of like the image down there on the right hand side. We can use this host guest chemistry to remove toxic materials in the environment. So zeolites, which are a specially designed cage, or branched organic polymers, are used to immobilize pollutants on the surface of the host, and then we can separate them. So we add in this zeolite, which is essentially a cage, it traps the molecules inside the cage and it can't escape, and then we're able to remove them from the system. Enzymes, enzymes are biological catalysts and biological washing powders contain granules of enzymes which upon release help to break down fats, proteins, starch and other organic molecules. These type of washing powders are more effective at cleaning at low temperatures. So instead of having to put our washing machine up to 50 degrees, which would increase the energy demand, we can wash at cold temperatures and get as good results. Enzymes have also been developed to help break down oil spills and other industrial wastes, and they're also added to assist the breakdown of chemicals, allowing microorganisms to process the waste components. So next time you're at the supermarket or when you finally leave home, have a look for these biological washing powders. They usually say on them that they're biological or that they contain enzymes. Give them a go, see how they work out. Will they do as good a job? I'm not sure. I don't do the washing at my house. But anyway, let's uh, have a go. Green chemistry, 
Well, the approach of green chemistry takes into account the environmental impacts of a chemical process and encourages the design that minimizes the use and generation of hazardous chemicals. A key concept in green chemistry is something known as atom economy. And atom economy is how much of the starting materials, the atoms, end up in the final product, the atoms. So here's an example where we're using benzene plus sulfuric acid plus sodium hydroxide to form a compound called phenol. And phenol is our final product here. But we need to use some solvents, some H2SO4 and some NaOH to get that phenol. So our atom economy can be calculated by calculating the number of atoms, the molar mass in the product, phenol, and dividing it by the molar mass of all of the reactants. So the percentage atom economy for this one would equal the molar mass of the product, which in this case is phenol, divided by the molar mass of all of the reactants. So in this case, the benzene plus the sulfuric acid plus the sodium hydroxide times 100. That will tell us how, what percentage of atoms is in our final product and also helps us understand how much byproducts we have. So for this reaction, the molar mass of phenol is 94. And then we divide that by the molar mass of benzene, which is 78, plus the molar mass of sulfuric acid, which is 98, plus the molar mass of sodium hydroxide. But we need two of them. I didn't balance that correctly. Um, but we need two, sulfur uh, two NaOHs, which means we have 36.7% atom economy. So that means that 36.7% of the atoms end up in the final product, whereas all of the other atoms are now a byproduct. Okay, so volume six, some top tips. That's the end of option B. Perhaps it's the end of your radiochemistry journey. Good luck, hope you work hard, get a good result on the exam, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, Drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and if this is the end of your journey, good luck, work hard, get the good score, go to the university that you want. Later.